TV. Welcome back and many thanks for staying with us right here in Morning at NTV. My name is Romeo Busiko and of course we are getting into our tech note conversation of the day. We are going to be discussing the community transmission of COVID-19 that is largely being exacerbated by complacency among members of the public. Also, the country has kicked off COVID-19 drug and vaccine trials. We would like to get an update on that. Well, we already have Dr. Monica Musenero, the Presidential Advisor on Epidemics and Pandemics. Also, Mr. Frederick Makaire, the Executive uh, Director of Self of uh, Self for Health Uganda. Both join me right now in studio. Very good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Roy. Well, let me start with you, Dr. Monica Musenero. Mm. We are going to be talking about community transmission, but first off, there are some COVID-19 drug and vaccine trials that already kicked off. We'd like to get an update. Um... Uh, good morning, viewers. And uh, in, within the country, we haven't yet started a vaccine trial, mm. but we are benefiting from trials that have come, mm. and we are discussing with various countries to see uh, whether we can, even before we get a full supply, mm. we could get some uh, to conduct trial within our context because Ugandans would want to know whether this vaccine will work or this, but we have not yet started. Mm -hmm. However, with our drugs, uh, we've been conducting several drug trials mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. treatment. Uh, it will take a while before vaccines actually reach mm -hmm. us. What, what drugs have you been trying out? Uh, we're trying out, there are several drugs that have been tried out. Mm -hmm. There were the, uh, the traditional ones, of course. Mm -hmm. We had hydroxychloroquine. Then we moved it to hyperimmune serum, mm. which is uh, coming to an end. We mm. should be getting a, a final answer from that. Right. Hyperimmune serum mm. is uh, you go to the person who has had COVID, and after you get their blood, after testing it for that, there's no other mm. thing. Then you get that uh, water part of the blood, and we use it to treat mm. other people. So that has been uh, running. It was launched by the minister some time ago. Mm. Uh, now we have been working under um, the Presidential Scientific Initiative mm. on Epidemics, which was just started uh, during this COVID, mm. and we're working on a number of uh, therapeutics, drugs, mm. and uh, we have been uh, working in the lab, and uh, trying out in the mm. lab, testing in animals. Remdesivir so is part of those trials? Mm, no. We've not had a trial of Remdesivir because... Mm. Um, even if we have that drug, mm -hmm. it is not going to be practical here. I see. It does cost 11 million. I see. So, yeah, a few people could afford, but mm. uh, as government, we have not really uh, gone into it because it does, one treating one person is mm. 11 million. So, I don't see how many people are going to afford that. Mm. So, we are have our uh, drugs that have been developed by. Mm. Ugandan researchers mm. and uh, those drugs uh, within the next two weeks we are just finalizing the approval processes mm. um, we are very confident that these drugs are going to be very useful and they are very affordable mm. I think treating the whole person so far we are estimating like costs a hundred thousand mm. all right let me also all right a hundred thousand only let me also bring in Frederick Makaire, the Executive Director of Cell for Health Uganda. The last time we spoke, you had kicked off an initiative, Community Health Schemes, involving members of the community in stopping the spread of COVID-19. Would you kindly give us an update? Thank you, Romeo, and uh, good morning, our listeners and viewers. I also especially want to greet people watching me from uh, Katika Muno. Katika Muno. <laughs> in <the> Wero, <laughs> where I'm contesting to become the member of parliament mm. in the next, uh, yes. in the next parliament. So, uh, yes, when we were here last time, mm. uh, we were promoting community health initiatives, mm. especially community health insurance initiatives, mm. because a lot of families had been challenged during the lockdown uh, accessing services. Mm. And a lot of families had lost income. So they were not able to access services in the health facilities as quickly as possible as mm. they needed it. So uh, as we speak right now, in Luwero, Nakaseke, Nakasongola, and in the other districts, 10 of them, uh, progress has uh, kicked off. People now have regained a bit of income. Mm. There is some more coffee harvest right now, and people have paid up. Mm. People have paid up. As we speak right now, just in the Luwero area, we have about 35,000 families, mm. uh, people, 
house uh, heads people in videos that have registered mm. and now they are able to access services but of course the population is still big mm. and this number is is yet to to, to increase mm. we still of course call upon government to subsidize their premium because mm. many of them want to be part of the scheme they are not able to pay the premium it is not very high premium we charge about 12,000 per head per year but a lot of families because of the size of the families some of them are not able to pay mm. so we think it's a good initiative it's enabling people to access services it is protecting a lot of families from selling off their assets mm. and making it easy in these hard times to access services with ease but the challenge is that there are number that are not able even mm. with this small premium to come on board well, with such a great initiative you'd think that government is already on board but why aren't they and where are you getting your funding uh, right now we are getting funding from uh, donors the government uh, has shown interest. I think they have already shown interest. We have a national health insurance bill mm. before parliament. Mm. For us, that is already some bit of commitment, uh, that that is the direction we should take. The problem is that it, uh, it drags and drags and drags and drags. It, we waited for that bill to reach in parliament for 20 years. Now it is before parliament for one year already. So we have started to count again. Mm. We don't know how many years it will take in parliament, then after parliament, it will go to the president. We don't know how that will take. So I think what government needs to do is to recognize that actually we have a need to have this insurance scheme All right. and then promote it. And probably as we wait for that national one, maybe also to come and support these community insurance schemes, which are already in place and supporting over almost about 200,000 people on insurance, mm. community insurance. So government could start with those. We scale them up as we wait for the national one. Of course, we cannot only talk about community health schemes without, you know, hinting on the community health workers themselves. Yes. So what is the role of the community health workers in stopping the spread of COVID-19 at the community level? Community level, I think the spread, is the challenge right now is testing mm. because we don't know who is infected and we don't know who is carrying the disease. Mm. So at the community level, because these days, because I'm doing campaigns as well, I move a lot. Mm. But what I see on the ground, I think even community health workers, it would be a challenge for them. Mm. Because in the communities, we receive dead bodies, and then we are told there this one is a COVID case. I've seen them myself, mm. Mm. but they come with a lot of people coming for the burials. So in a, co a place where you're burying a COVID patient, mm. a dead body that has died of COVID, somebody else has died of COVID, you have thousands of people gathered there. They know there is no face masks. They are no so there is no social distancing. Wash handing in those events have stopped long ago. Then we have weddings, we have these political rallies that we do, and there are so many people gathered in these events. Mm. And so you no longer tell who has actually COVID and who is got getting it from who. Mm. So that kind of transmission has made it so difficult, mm. even for the health workers, and yet we don't see testing on the ground. All right, the good thing we do have Dr. Musenero, the presidential advisor on epidemics and pandemics. Uh, why is it that we are not seeing mass testing of COVID-19 in the whole country? Because according to many experts, targeted testing is not working. And number two, what is the real magnitude of the spread of COVID-19 at the community level? What is causing this complacency? Uh, thank you very much. Mm. Um, uh, let me start with the last one. All right. What is causing the complacency in mm. the community? It is not related to testing. Mm. Okay, maybe that could be a consequence, but um, uh, controlling COVID-19 required adoption of um, things that we are not used to. Right. Things that uh, are not part of the usual culture, part of the routine. Now, in an epidemic where you require people to take a drastic uh, change in the way they live, mm. you, it, it, it works if that's for a short time. Like when we had the first lockdown, the majority of the people. But now when you have to ask people in a prolonged way to take on things like uh, putting on a mask, you know, putting on a mask is not a very comfortable thing. Somebody has to think consciously and to treasure their lives and uh, not everybody lives consciously like that. So it needs a lot of education, it needs a lot of uh, promotion. Uh, secondly, we COVID came at a very sensitive time in Uganda. It seems sometimes fashionable for some mm. political actors, sorry for my political <laughs> friend. It seems fashionable for them to oppose mm. 
uh, anything that has come from the mainstream. So you find that many politicians uh, don't. But even genuinely, I find a lot of politicians themselves, and many of them are getting infected, very many of them mm. are getting infected. Mm. They can't keep on a mask. They, they put on a mask like to make us, the scientists, happy because <laughs> that was the condition yeah. for them to have. Mm. But then when they reach in the people, they do this to talk, mm. you know. Now, th you see them doing this, mm. it's like, uh, let me suck in a bit of COVID, then I'll recover it inside. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the day, it's not so like Yeah, that. so you see me, uh, we've met a few times, yeah, and uh, I'm mm. always insist, put on your mask. Indeed. Because if I put mm. on my mask, I'm protecting you. Indeed. But if you're not putting on your mask, you're not, I'm not protected mm. as, as well as I should be. Could it be that misinformation is also partly leading yeah. to this problem? People yeah. who are saying this is largely a political problem, uh, politicians using COVID-19 as a ruse to get a clean getaway for but the 2021 that, election? That, that, that was uh, an, a bit of an issue, genuinely, mm. as a bit of an issue about that COVID is not there, what, what coming from the West, mm. the religious groups. But I think we overcame that, especially as people have their relatives, they have friends, even individuals themselves have suffered from COVID. Mm. But uh, I don't know where people get this uh, just indifference to other people. As long as for me, I get what I want. Mm. You know, it's selfishness. Uh, let me call it, it's just selfishness. For me, I will get what I want if I don't get infected, because which politician usually goes back to check if the people who were at your rally got infected? We are barring those people. Mm. They, are, they are crying out for testing, but for you, you've moved on with your rally. It's just utter carelessness and selfishness, mm. because what would, be the, what would be so harmful for you to incorporate this COVID message? Because as a nation, as a people, we should have some common ground and fighting COVID mm. is, should be that common ground that whatever my message is, I need live people. This disease does not only just kill, we know that it has long-term effects on a big percentage of people who mm. get infected. Mm. Even children who get the infected. Psychological set. Not mm. just psychological. Mm. It affects <coughs> their physiology. Mm. It affects, the, if you talk to people who have been through COVID, <coughs> even just uh, they didn't get very sick. Mm. It takes them very long to get back to work. And at the moment, we don't know the long-term effects that's going to have. Mm. You know, many people have effect on their brains. Yeah. They can't think properly. They become very forgetful. They, many people continue suffering from headache. Many people, their lungs take very long to go back to normal function. So this is going to be a very huge impact on the world. And politicians, we're aspiring to be leaders should you take this responsibility. You know, it doesn't matter where you are, whether you are from which party or mm. which party, let's have this as a common ground mm. that we all care about the lives of the people. So that is one of the sources of complacency. Mm. The other questions you asked, mm. now... The issue of mass testing, because targeted yes, testing doesn't yes. seem to work. Now, mm. the issue of mass testing is a very, very tricky one if you do not produce your own diagnostic kits. I see. Yeah, the, the diagnostic kits, the way Uganda started with the diagnostic kits being imported, very expensive, $65, that includes the buying the kit plus all the things, supplies, and then running the test, it is very, very expensive. Mm. You know, if, we, if you run a thousand tests, that's $65,000. Mm -hmm. And if in Uganda at this point, we should be testing like 20000 per day. Mm. That's really, really expensive. But we, there are several things that are being done. One, there are rapid diagnostic kits that have been, uh, are, the test is ongoing. I think we are coming to, uh, towards the conclusion of that testing. And uh, this is going to avail almost, you know, very, very short time. Mm. And uh, they have proved they, they somehow the preliminary information shows they are working well. Also at home, we, we were just delayed because uh, COVID hit a lot of countries. So wherever we ordered, uh, we ordered our equipment, they also couldn't get the parts the to, make, them, yeah, okay. to make the, the machines. Mm. 
but uh, we've been assured that that machine, just one piece out of the whole manufacturing unit, mm. one, one critical piece had mm. not yet come. We were talking to the manufacturer and he assured us that uh, he's shipping the machine on 5th mm. this month. And uh, once it comes, our complete manufacturing line will be complete. So we will start making those PCR diagnostic kits here. But also our scientists have worked on uh, a Ugandan-generated diagnostic kit. Uh, we have finished phase one uh, of laboratory uh, proof of concept. We have run a trial and it's really good. And this mm. one is very, very quick. Mm. You get results from picking specimen result in 30 minutes mm. and it can be done in the field. You don't need anything very special. Mm. We hope that uh, with by January <coughs> we should be able to mm. To, deep, to start deploying this. On Sunday, the president was also talking about a two-minute saliva test. Yeah, uh, and that's where we are moving now. That's where the scientists are really, really working because mm -hmm. the one we have moved on now is uh, still picking the swab, and that swab is very, it's part of the cost, and it's very uncomfortable. So on this rapid kit now, our scientists are working on the saliva. So it's basically pick your saliva, put in the tube, heat it, very simple, and I'm so proud because this is Ugandan made. Indeed. It's by Ugandans. Mm, indeed. All yeah. right. Uh, that is uh, Dr. Monica Musenero, the presidential advisor on epidemics and pandemics. She's not alone. I also do have Mr. Frederick Makaide, the F executive director of Save for Health Uganda. He's also vying to be the Katikamu North. MP or representative within that regard. So as a politician, Mr. Frederick Makaide, mm. uh, Dr. Musenero says you are to blame and others in the exacerbation of the spread of COVID-19. Is it true that politicians have done a great, great part in the exacerbation of COVID-19 cases that we are seeing among members of the community? Thank you, Romeo. I uh, think the key word is some. <laughs> 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 Go ahead. I would say yes or, and no. Mm. Uh, I think partly we can't say we run away from the responsibility Indeed. because we are the ones gathering people. Mm. Because we definitely need to speak to people. Mm. Uh, there is no way you can vie for a position. In my case, for mm. example, it's mm. the first time I'm vying for political position. They need to see you and so They forth. need to see me. Mm. People demand, who is that one? And mm. we need to see him. Mm. We need to hear his views. And so by that alone, I need people around me. The other challenge I've seen is the people themselves. People themselves have failed to control themselves. I think the message mm. has gone. The Ministry of Health, the President, and all the people who have guided us, the scientists, I think they have done a good job. Mm. Everybody knows what to do. But when time for this political rally or meeting comes, the population forgets about the SOPs and all this. So because they're expecting some exactly. oh. something. Yeah, exactly. that's why so they can't stay at home. They are, when they come for the mm. rally, they know he'll give them some. So over commercialization of politics exactly. has yeah, also played yeah, a role. It's, it's if they really see Frederick Makaire mounting a campaign, they expect some money. Something. Mm -hmm. So they come out in draws. Mm -hmm. in, and then they don't have the masks. I've seen some of them. I've personally, I've been advising them to put on masks. Then some people say, we didn't get the masks. Others say, we got one. The mm. government gave us one. We have overwashed it and it's worn out. I see. So there are also those issues that people got only one mask. Maybe they need more. And then, uh, like doctor said, some of these masks are very uncomfortable. So some people put them a bit and then they remove. Actually, most of them have on them on the chin. Mm. So, but I think the biggest problem is that expectation that a politician has something to give. Mm -hmm. And so that automatically pulls people and then they forget everything mm. around COVID and how mm. it is transmitting and all these issues. Mm. So I think for us as politicians, it is very difficult to control these crowds. Mm. We try, but it's very difficult because we need them. And if you find so many of them, you feel it's a good opportunity to give your message. And then you are not in charge of how they are spread and how they stand and how this. So you, what we do, we try to speak to them and move on. Mm. But it's... It's a very difficult situation right now. But do you believe the messaging also from the politicians has played a very, very ugly part mm -hmm. in the exacerbation of this problem? Because you have politicians who will get to the podium and say, we are not going to honor any of the SOPs. Simply the people from the other side are also not honoring the mm -hmm. SOPs. So if, as a politician, if you say I'm not going to wear a face mask or social distance, how will your subjects follow you? Yeah, you're right. I, I, I've, uh, I think we, I can't say all politicians mm. are doing that. Mm. 
I think some politicians are trying to show the example to the to the public. Mm. Personally, I try. Mm. Wherever I go, I move with the sanitizer, for mm. example. My, my microphones, I make sure they are sanitized before I give people to ask questions or to speak. But uh, yeah, there are also people I've heard who disregard this whole thing and they don't really care at all. You don't find any washing uh, facilities in the venue and all these things. So mm. I think, yes, uh, there are people who still don't believe that there is COVID mm. and that uh, maybe in some communities we have not seen people buried mm. who have died of COVID. So there are those uh, doubts, Indeed. even among politicians. Mm. But I would advise that for us as politicians, as you say, we should be the example. We should show people that it's important to put on a mask. In our venues, maybe we should be able to make people stand in sp the th spaces. And maybe as we speak, we should be advising them on the microphone so that they hear. Maybe if we do it again and again, people will start to believe us. But it's a bit complicated also because Indeed. of the time. Mm. We have very few minutes in the place. So the minutes you arrive there, you just want to pass your message and mm. move on. But uh, yeah. Hopefully things will get better. Because as a politician, if you're going to get to the podium and say, ah, for us, you're not going to social distance, simply because President Museveni and his surrogates who wait for him That's on the roads to wave at him are not wearing face masks or are doing processions, then we are headed in a very, very ugly direction. Yeah. But as the executive director yeah. of Self for Health, take us back to those communities. Mm -hmm. What are some of those factors that make it so hard for the members of the community to social distance, to wear face masks, to actually implement most of these SOPs that we are seeing. Because according to the information I'm getting, it's not that some people don't want to implement these SOPs, but they do not have the requisite um, requirements that they need to implement the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. What are the uh, factors? Some of the factors are one I alluded to earlier. Uh, some of them actually don't have the face masks. Mm -hmm. but, but that is poverty, factor yeah, number one. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I think but that... But why, why don't you, instead of giving them that 1,000, mm. why don't you give them a mask? Well... Even <laughs> if you bought the surgical <laughs> ones. Yeah. Even the surgical <laughs> ones are really cheap. Mm. So even if it's not a cloth, you, at least w instead of giving, if every politician who goes to a community... Instead of buying a poster, instead buy of a face Yeah. Mm. Okay, they could have their posters because they want people, but they give money. Mm. Why don't you, a, a mask costs between 